Hello everyone. Um, there was a time we made a video that we demonstrated um, the so-called electric fast transient noise often seen in a heavy industrial environment. Often this kind of electric fast transient or we call it bursts noise, they are transient events caused by relays being switched on and off or motor all of a sudden um, being shut down, emergency stopping press, things like that, where the inductive component in the system generates a kickback voltage. Um, therefore, the voltage in terms of the amplitude is quite high, in terms of the frequency is also uh, quite high. Therefore, equipment connected to the same mains network may suffer from transient events such as this. And recently, I've worked on some products that actually fail the transient test. And the failure mode might sound very familiar. The company installed their unit in a very uh, noisy EM environment. Then all of a sudden, they got reports uh, showing that their timer has been reset. So I successfully troubleshoot this issue for them. And today, I just wanted to share you some of the techniques I often use for troubleshooting electric fast transient. So to troubleshoot transient events, you definitely need a transient generator. As you can see, this is a very old EFT burst transient generator, and uh, I have been using it for many years um, I, and successfully troubleshooting pretty much all the EFT and burst failures I've seen in the, in the field. And um, basically what it does is it has a high voltage source that can generate transient event and through the CDN, and remember the CDN means coupling decoupling network, therefore you can uh, couple the noise to the mains network. You can also connect it to a capacitive coupling clamp to do some transient events on cable, which we will cover next time. But really to troubleshoot on a PCB level, what you really need is a cable, coaxial cable like this. Um, you can always buy these from companies that can make these special cables. I can, uh, I'll show you the link. Uh, but as you can see, one end of the coaxial cable is just a normal BNC, whereas the other end is a what we call SHV connector. Okay, so basically, it's rated for very high voltage, and you can see they are made quite differently with the normal BNC cable. Uh, so I made this by myself. Um, but uh, yeah, when you make this, you need some uh, uh, RF. Uh, knowledge to make it uh, really safe and also uh, uh, shielded properly, okay? So I'm going to connect this end to the HV output of the uh, transient generator, often showing uh, in here, as you can see, there is a HV sign there. So that's where this coaxial cable is connected to, okay? So I will, so I've connected this end to the high, vi high voltage output. And then on this end, what I can do is I can connect it to a near-field probe. As you can see, this is a very simple homemade near-field probe, unshielded, right? It's just simply a, uh, a copper wire uh, with heat shrink and then connected to a BNC cable. And also I can make different sizes. As you can see here, I have a, a different size. So I'm going to demonstrate first is I connect it to this uh, slightly larger loop. And as usual, I'm going to measure the current um, transient current going through this bit of the conductor because what happens is when you apply a high voltage transient voltage on this little wire you will inevitably have current going through uh, this bit of conductor and then by having a current probe you can appreciate the current going through um, the conductor during the transient event on this loop okay so I set up um, my current probe and I set the reading in amps and let's have a look. So I'm going to apply a 500 volts um, voltage from the transient generator. You know, during the compliance tests, if you're using CDN, you often start with like 1 kV, 1.5 kV, 2 kV. But for this test, because we, we just wanted to troubleshoot, and we troubleshoot by applying a transient voltage on this small loop. So you don't really need a big voltage. Often I just use 500 volts or maximum 1 kV. So in this case, I'm just going to demonstrate 500 volts. Okay, so I'm going to apply the pulse now. You can immediately see the, uh, uh, the scope capture, the current going through the conductor. 
as you can see, we have 5 amps per division, so this easily reaches uh, about 12 or even 15 amps during a 500 volts um, test. Okay, so you can induce current, or in other words, voltage, into uh, the loop. Okay, so think about it, if you have high, if you have a transient current, high amplitude going through this bit of a wire, and if we use the 10 nano Henry per centimeter rule, we can work out the V uh, voltage drop across this uh, length of conductor, right? So V equals L di over dt, simple as that. Meaning, I can generate a voltage across this conductor, okay? So let's have a look. So now I'm gonna choose another loop, doesn't really matter in this case. Huh? So as we learned, if you apply a voltage, you will have a voltage across this bit of conductor. Therefore, if you have a circuit where you suspect, um, you know, uh, susceptible to transient noise, noise, what do you do? You can basically apply a voltage on this loop, and then you just move this loop close to the trace or tracks on a PCB where you suspect might have the problems. Okay, and the way it works really is simple, because when you do something like this you have a mutual coupling between this bit of the conductor and the trace or track um, on the PCB. Therefore, you will, by mutual coupling or magnetic field coupling, you will also generate a voltage across this bit of a wire, which often on, is on your PCB. And that voltage will drive a noisy current. And bear in mind, this current is a transient current. And that will goes to perhaps your transceiver or receiver to to you know both ends and if you have a weak design it will cause problems so let's demonstrate that okay so as we demonstrated in this case again the same uh, uh, demonstration uh, board I used last time for ESD demonstration you can see we have uh, two traces over PCB ground one is with a gap the other one has a continuous ground so as I said, I can just inject noise into the trace by doing this. So I'm going to inject on this trace first. Okay, so we've got some noise measured. Bear in mind that's voltage measurement on the um, receiving end of the scope. And you can see it definitely generates a, a transient voltage pulse into your system. So the question then is, can your system withstand this voltage have you provided enough transient uh, devices, transient protection devices such as TVS in your chip design to prevent this uh, causing an issue? Okay, so let's try another one um, by injecting noise on this. Let's have a look. Okay, there, there you go. Look, um, again, the same uh, scale you can see when I inject the same noise into the trace over a gapped ground, you generate a lot more transient noise um, in the same setup. Again, the question then through is through the engineer, have you designed your system properly so that they can withstand this kind of transient event? Okay. This is negative. Yes. Yeah, okay.